Hey guys, OJ Albina here, bringing you guys our next tier list video. Yes, they're finally back. I know it's been a minute. I've just been caught up with a lot of other content. I haven't had the time to upload one of these, so I want to bring them back. I know you guys enjoy them. Today, we are going to be going over each and every fire type, fully evolved fire type, in the draft league format. We are going to be ranking them based on their value and viability, kind of a conglomerate of both. We've done pretty much every other type before this up to this point, so um, go check those out if one of those are your favorite typing. And uh, yeah, with that being said, let's jump into it. If you guys do enjoy today's video, be sure to drop a like on the vid as well as subscribe to the channel. We just hit 1K, so thank you guys so much. We're on our way to 2,000, and we're also gonna be doing a Scarlet and Violet giveaway for two copies here soon. Um, so you gotta stick around and you know, get a little bit more information on that. But yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and um, jump on into it. Like I said, I'm gonna kind of be ranking these things not only based on how good they are, um, but also based on the value that they offer to a draft league team. So say I think Charizard offers an insane amount of value, even though it's like worse objectively than something like Moltres with the same typing, maybe I think that Charizard offers S tier value for its price point, and I don't think Moltres does. Now that's not the case, we'll jump into it. I just kind of wanted to give that, um, basis when we jump into it you see there's not a lot of fire typings before we jump into it too the fire typing isn't necessarily a required typing in draft league now a lot of new players when they first start out they're told um about their dragon fairy steel core which is a great place to start as well as a fire water grass core uh and while i do think that that's a great place to start and to kind of learn how to get general drafting strategies down the fire typing is probably one of the least required typings in draft so a lot of times with the fire for me they have to offer something exemplary that their normal fire type counterparts don't because fire doesn't have the best utility defensively and it's okay offensively. That rocks weakness often locks you into boots or you're taking 25% every time you switch in. So there's a lot going down. Um, so obviously I'm gonna kind of go over um, it with that in mind in the sense that it doesn't necessarily offer inherent value to a team just for being a fire type, but they are all fire types. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, Charizard, we're gonna put it in C tier. Zard um, gained a lot of good inherent value here in Generation 8 with getting access to Heavy Duty Boots. Now, if this was Gen 7 or before, I would have put this thing in D tier as having to remove Stealth Rock for something like Charizard just really isn't worth it in my opinion in a lot of matchups. Um, but now that it can run Boots and kind of switch in and out freely, it has some good offensive utility maybe on Sun with solar power sets or even on um, just regular fat uh, Will-O-Wisping Zards or, you know, Spadef, Fizdev Zards and things like that can offer a little bit of inherent value. Maybe spend some Toxics around flamethrowing and air slashing and hurricaning and things like that. So it's not the best Pokemon in the world. I definitely wouldn't like recommend drafting it, but it does offer some value and it'll probably end up towards the end of C tier um, for this video. The Dragonfly, or the Dragonfly, the Fire Flying typing is, you know, traditionally very solid. Now we can jump onto its counterpart in Zard Y and put this thing up in A tier. I personally like this more than Zardex, which we'll talk about in a second. Though, I do think Zardex is a little bit better objectively. I love using Zard Y. I think if you can um, fit good removal in your team, like Yard Sand is one of my favorite kind of archetypes to draft around in uh, standard Nat decks and things like that. This Pokemon just doesn't have switch-ins. Under the sun, whether it be Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Weather Ball, Overheat, even a mixed Flare Blitz, this thing is an absolute nuke and a half. So I think it can be incredibly fun when it comes to that. We move this over here so I can pull up the stats and stuff on the side. Char is our Y. Yeah, 159 special attack in the sun just doesn't have switch-ins um, a lot of time, especially when you have solar beam to hit waters, um, air slash for good, you know, uh, special flying stab. You got focus blast to hit rocks if you really need to, like the random T-tars that might run around, things like that. And you have a really fat spadef set. Again, you can also go with Swords Dance or Dragon Dance variants as well to kind of boost up, go with Mixed or just Physical in general. Um, and it's just a great Pokemon. I love Yard. I think it's a lot of fun. I definitely think you should give it a shot. Zard X. And it, when it comes to the grand scheme of fire types, I think I have to put it in S tier personally. It fits on a lot of teams. Once you get mega up, you don't have that four times weakness anymore. So while removal is definitely needed, it's not a required thing to like make sure you have your remover around the best remover in the game for the Zardex. I feel like it can function obviously incredibly in a Dragon Dance set, uh, setting, but also in a Swords Dancing setting with Tough Claws boosted, Flare Blitzes or Fire Punches, and then like Dragon Claws or... Uh, earthquakes and things like that. Obviously, Tough Claws isn't boosted by... Er, earthquake isn't boosted by Tough Claws, but you know what I mean. Incredibly strong, reliable recovery, 130 in both of its attack stats, 
111 base defense with 85 speed up with 78 HP. This thing can be incredibly fat. Fat Zard is such a demon. I've seen will o -Wisping Fat DD Zards with Mono Fire Punch just clean through teams. It sets up on a lot of water types that you would typically use to check an offensive fire like a, like a Charizard. Um, so it can really bully through those. It gets Thunder Punch as well to hit those Pokemon very hard. And it's just a great mono overall. It's very, very, very difficult to deal with over the course of the game. Okay. Next up, we have Ninetales. I'm going to put Ninetales in D tier solely because of the fact that while I don't think it's like inherently the worst Pokemon in the world, I think that if you're going to draft a sun setting fire type, there's literally no reason to not draft Torkoal. Um, and I guess Zardby, but Zardby isn't really a sun setter. It sets the sun for itself to do hella damage. Uh, if you're going to draft sun, you should be drafting Torkoal. We'll talk about Torkoal in a little bit, but Ninetales just doesn't offer much defensively or offensively. It's very weak. It's very frail. It's not the fastest in the world, and it doesn't really offer too much. So I, I really don't think it's too worth it when it comes to drafting. Arcanine, on the other hand, I do think I am going to probably keep in low A tier, maybe mid B. Um, depending on how the rest of this list uh, pans out, we're probably going to move things around a little bit as we go. Um, honestly, no, I'm going to move into B. I know some people might be pissed. I really don't like Arcanine, and I rarely ever consider drafting it. Boots gave it great defensive viability. It gets teleport. Good priority and strength speed. can very, be very strong offensively. I think defensively is where I really don't like Arcanine very much. I know that's where most people think of it. It's that, like intim defensive pivot with Morning Sun and Willow and things like that. But I feel like it's so pressured to take hits, and especially in generation where it's kind of forced to hold boots, you're pretty easy knock fodder. You're forced into an item, you're knock fodder, and then from there, it's a lot harder to defensively check the things that you need to, even with your intim and your good bulk, if rocks are up. So I'm not the biggest fan of defensive fire types in general, and um, Arcanine isn't my favorite Pokemon. I like it a lot offensively, but I'm really not that big of a fan of it defensively. <laughs> Okay, next up we have Rapidash. I'm gonna put Rapidash in D tier. I do think it's very viable though. Uh, one to five base speed and pretty good coverage and like high horsepower and things like that can be fun. It can flame charge. Um, I believe it gets flash fire as well. Yeah, so it gets, uh, you know, utility and having a nice immunity to fire and boosting up its own fire moves. It can wild charge as well, I believe. It might be able to wild charge. It should be able to, it's a horse. Um, and it can morning sign, it can toxic and willow. It's all those fun things. So it's a decent Pokemon, especially in a lower tier area if you need like that one to five speed tier for some reason. Rapidash is a pretty good option for that. Okay, Alola Marowak, I'm going to put it in the top of C tier. I actually do enjoy this Pokemon quite a bit. I don't think I can justifiably jump bump it up to B tier just yet, but it is very, very solid and a lot of fun to use. Um, it's very hard to use. It's a fire type that really can't run boots. You kind of have to run that thick club every single week, but... And so you're going to be weak to, uh, you know, the rocks and you're very slow and can't be knocked off like ever. You're just not allowed to because one, it might kill you after rocks and two, you'll lose all of your damage output. But if you can position this thing offensively, it is an absolute monster and basically impossible to switch into with ghost plus fire stab as well as ground coverage and things like that. Um, it, it just nukes through everything and there's nothing that switches into it. So if you can position it well offensively, I think it can be a lot of fun. I've drafted it a few times and I've had some pretty good success with it. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to keep it there. Magmar, I, I'm just gonna we're, gonna, we're gonna jump ahead and we're gonna put these guys in D tier. They don't offer much. Flareon can wish his bows and like Heal Bell. Magmar can teleport with like an Eevee Light, but they're both not good Pokemon. And I'd be lying to all of you if I tried to pretend they were somewhat viable. So we're going to keep them down here. Next up, another Fire Flying type here in A tier in Moltres. I love Moltres' generation, man. With Boots, we don't have to worry about spinning things away for it and defogging, which it was still worth drafting in Gen 7. Don't get me wrong. I actually didn't think it was a terrible Pokemon in the slightest in Gen 7 but in uh and in gen 6 i suppose uh but in gen 8 i love this thing whether it be mystical fire which is a great tool for a uh, mom that can be as annoying spit f wise as this thing toxic uh sub toxic pressure variants are annoying flame body just to get burned uh hurricane plus fire move plus scorching sands can really hit a lot of teams very very hard um under the sun this thing can be an absolute monster as well so this thing is really solid i love drafting mulches love drafting mulches for its defensive utility but also the sneaky offensive uh, potential that it has okay we got Typhlosion next. I'm going to put Typhlosion here in D tier as well. I think its upside is pretty cool in some matchups. I apologize if, you, apologize if you guys hear like a big blender in the background, but that's making a smoothie apparently. Um, Typhlosion Eruption can be incredibly, incredibly strong, but that's really all, all it offers. And you do kind of have to be like a Specs variant or a Scarf variant for that to be viable. Can't really be Boots Eruption in a lot of matchups. There's probably a few that you can be it, but... A lot of matchups you can't really. Um, so keeping the rocks away for something as measly as a Typhlosion isn't the best thing in the world. And its coverage is notoriously bad. It basically has Focus Blast, which is good coverage for rocks. Um, but that's it. 
that, that's really what it has. It has the same stats as regular Charizard, just with a better, a worse typing and worse move pool. So I'm not the biggest on Diflosion, unfortunately. Man, there's so many bad fire types right now, and this is really making me sad that there's so many bad ones. Um, next up, we have Macargo, and he's he's also got to go in D tier, guys. I don't know what you want me to do. He's he's a very funny guy. I like Goober. He's a he's very cute, but um, I, he doesn't he doesn't do anything. Unfortunately, uh, he has access to Flame Body and Weak Arm, which is cool, and Shell Smash, but 30 base speed, not a very good defensive typing uh, with mediocre defense. This just isn't really worth using all too often. I'll be honest. So. And unfortunately, he's going to go in D tier here, as is something like Houndoom. Now, Houndoom does have a cool secondary typing and can be kind of annoying to switch into, I guess, in some matchups. And one, uh, 95 base speed isn't terrible. 110 is somewhat strong, so there might be a random matchup where, like, Houndoom can pop off. It gets Sludge Bomb, which is cool potential coverage, I suppose. Um, Nasty Plot plus Dark Pulse and Sludge Bomb and Fire Move can really break through a lot of teams pretty well. But uh, it's, it's kind of mediocre speed tier wise and things like that. Now, a Pokemon I do think actually has some good viability is going to be Mega Houndoom. Now, I haven't ever drafted it myself, so I could be wrong because um, I've never really had the opportunity to because I have so many better things. But 115 speed and 140 special attack with decent ish natural bulk is really tough to switch into with the coverage that we just mentioned. As well as solar power, if you get the sun up, I, I dude, I remember back in the day when Adri drafted Torkoal Houndoom Mega, I thought he was crazy for that one. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like this one has some decent viability. It's just hard to justify drafting it where there are other megas allowed. So actually, I think I have to put a top of C tier if that's the case. But I really do think he could be really cool if he's explored more. So yeah. Entei. Entei gets going B tier. This is a Pokemon I actually kind of violently shat on for a while. I didn't think it was very good. But in using it in BBL this last season, I've kind of seen the light. I think Boots made this thing a lot more viable with non-choice sets. I think Choice Band and Choice Scarf sets can also be very, very strong. I've seen Calm Mind Weakness Policy Entei put in work uh, with like a Sunny Day variant. Um, I've seen like Sub Lava Plume Calm Mind, you know, be really, really annoying with pressure. Um, and I've seen AV do very, very well as well too. So. This mom's actually pretty solid. It doesn't have the best coverage in the world, but it kind of forces its own progress with getting Sacred Fire Burns. Um, e Speed's great priority, Stone Edge, things like that. I wish it got ground coverage. That wasn't scored. Oh, uh, yeah. Something changed too. Oh. Like, it, it should get Earthquake with some of the other mods that get Earthquake, but Beggars can't be chosen, unfortunately. Um, it's a cool mod, though. I like it a lot. Um, and it's definitely a lot better than I gave it credit for initially. All right, we got Blaze again. Now, this is not Speed Boost Blaziken. I said it in my fighting video and I will say it again. If your league is a standard draft league and it allows Speed Boost Blaziken or Speed Boost Mega Blaziken because it is not good in OU, so therefore it's good in draft, your league is not very smart and you shouldn't be doing that. I think uh, allowing Speed Boost Blaziken is a top five worst draft league take ever. So we're gonna be talking about Blaze Blaziken with Speed Boost Band. And now, Blaziken, I actually think it's pretty solid. And I think it's a lot of fun. I think the one thing that really lets it down is that terrible speed tier in base 80, kind of forcing it into a scarf in a lot of matchups. But I do think that it is pretty solid offensively. Very good mixed wise. Very good uh, with U-turn this generation and close combat. Makes it a little bit more reliable at what it does. It gets a random defog um, and very, very good coverage overall. So I think C tier is honestly a completely fair placing for it, um, personally. All right, camera ups. I'm going to go ahead and put camera up in D tier as well. Um, it's not terrible as like a low tier ground um, and like a good top tier electric check. Like it checks like Zero Aura Coco really, really, really well. Um, but that's really all it offers. It's niche. It's solid in eight mon. I've seen people draft it before. But I do have a hot take here. I am going to put Mega Camera up at the top of B tier because I think it is 150% that good. Now, for its price point, I should say. This thing, if you can offensively position it and get it in where it's in on something that can't really threaten it very much, just picks KOs. Sheer Force plus its Earth Power and Flamethrower Fire Blast, those coverage moves, is just unguardable in a lot of matchups. I really love this thing with like a Rillaboom or yeah, Rillaboom because Bulu sucks, like a Rillaboom or even a Coco or something like that. So it can throw off big nature powers and just nuke through water types that think that they can switch into Earth Power and take two. Um, because then you can nature power, get the boost, and just like nuke through them with a basically a thunderbolt or an energy ball, which I think is really cool. It's a cool thing we've done with Heatran on the channel before, but I've also done with Mega Camera up to matchups for like Rotom Wash 
I had like a blue or something like that. So I think Mega Camel is a lot of fun. It's a very reliable rocker. It's very anti-metal. Like I said, it checks a lot of the top tier Pokemon that are very annoying. Um, and it's just, it's a demon. It's a great Pokemon. Love it to death. I think it's awesome. So B, uh, Mega Camera for sure. Then we have Torkoal. I'm gonna go ahead and put Torkoal also in C tier, just on the sheer value that Sun can offer. Um, I think Sun plus Genu is usually the move. And then maybe a strong fire type like a Victini. Um, like a strong fire type, like a Victini or something like that, can be v definitely very, very viable. And we'll talk about that Pokemon in a little bit. Um, but Torval has good defensive utility. It spins, it rocks, it does things like that. It sets up the sun for other Pokemon, which is really what it's supposed to do a lot of the time. Um, its defensive utility can kind of be hampered if it's like a heat rock set, because then it's not boots, it's not leftovers, it's not helmet, things like that. But I've also seen just like defensive Torkoals put in a lot of work. Lava Plume hurts in the sun. That plus Earth Power and Solar Beam can be really annoying coverage despite this Pokemon not being the strongest thing in the world. So, pretty solid mod. Okay, I'm gonna skip over Cast Form. It's not an actual fire type. Um, and then I am going to skip over Primal Gowardon as well. Because, hot take. Don't think he should be allowed in Draft League. Next up, we have Infernape. I'm gonna go ahead and put Infernape in A tier. I think Infernape is phenomenal if you use it. Um, with its versatility in mind, opposed to slapping a scarf on it every week, which it is a great scarfer, but it's great with a band, specs, um, it's great with the life orb being mix sets. I've seen fat apes put in work. I've seen weakness policy go crazy. Um, shout out to Kaz. I think that was Kaz. I'm pretty sure he runs like weakness policy, everything, or at least he didn't own classic. Um, but just a very strong, solid Pokemon overall. I really do like it. There's like no fire types gen five. I forgot. There's just three more. Wow. Okay. Next up, Magmortar. I'm sorry, Tony. This Pokemon absolutely sucks. Um, that's a that's a Quillava, not a Magmortar. There we go. It has decent coverage, but it's not very bulky. It's not very strong, um, and it's not very fast. That's that's it. I mean, I guess 125 is pretty decently strong and acts like Thunderbolt and things like that. Is cool, but it's not that strong. I'll be honest. I'm just not a big fan. Not a big fan of it. Um, next up, we have Rotom. I'm actually gonna go ahead and put Rotom up here in A's here. I love me some Rotom Heat. Um, in the draft league format with boots, this thing just volt switches and overheats forever. It will always thunder waves, pain splits, toxics, nasty plots up now, and things like that. It's a great defensive typing with a levitate um, added on top of it. Uh, it's just an amazing Pokemon overall. Very hard to switch into, very hard to Oko in one hit, and it's just always going to be a nuisance and get its job done if it's played correctly. Next, we finally have our first S or second S tier Pokemon in Heatran. You guys know me, you know I love Heatran. Even though he refused to hit Magma Storms all season for me last season in NCP, I will continue to draft him. I will continue to click Magma Storm and protect and Toxic and potentially Specs and Scarf Eruption and be a reliable rocker. Just protect my lefties all the way back up to full. With my crazy defensive typing, outside of ground, this thing just eats hits from everything, which is great. So you get good ground resist for this thing. It's going to be an absolute demon. I absolutely love this Pokemon. I think Heatran is for sure an amazing Pokemon. Probably my favorite fire type I've ever drafted. It might be the best one on this list just because how much I value it. All right, next up we got Victini. I'm gonna put Victini up here too. Um, like I said, with Sun, it's a nuke, but in general, it's just a nuke in general with uh, V Create, as well as great coverage and like Bolt Strike and U Turn and a bunch of special coverage as well. Whether it be like the signature moves and like um, what do you call it, Blue Flare or whatever it might be, or just dropping like Thunders and Thunderbolts and Psychic and Dazzling Gleam, U Turn, Energy Ball, all that stuff. This thing is very versatile offensively. It can be banned, Specs, Scarf, Boots. Um, Assault Vest I've seen put in work. I've seen Life Orb obviously go crazy. We've even seen AV Victini put in a little bit of work sometimes, so. I think I brought AV Victini to check a Xerneas one time, and it did super well. Because it still has great serviceable bulk as well, so. Victini, amazing Pokemon. Very, very, very solid. And, um, yeah, I think it's definitely an S tier. So, two S tiers in a row. Look at that. Okay, next up we have Embor, Embreezy. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put Embreezy in C tier here. I actually think this thing is pretty decently viable. It's incredibly strong with Reckless. Um, head Smashes, Flare Blitzes, and Wild Charges. It gets Sucker Farm for priority. Even a random Scald and Grass Knot, I believe, which is cool. I think AV Embor is a lot of fun and a very solid Pokemon. But Scarf and Band are always a great option as well. So, pretty solid mod. Pants here. I'm gonna kind of skim past these terrible ones. I'm sorry, there's a lot of terrible fire types and they're all terrible for the same reason. Um, this is one of them. You get to go right here. Um, Darmanitan, very, very fun Pokemon. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in B tier. I really like using Darm if I can fit him on a team. 
Choice Band or Life Orb Boosted Flare, it just doesn't have a switch in with Hazards up. So if you can position this thing well offensively, it's going to go crazy. It's just tough to position offensively because it has negative bulk as well as not a lot of, um, what do you call it, longevity with recoil and rocks and things like that. So, uh, but it's still very, very good. Next up, Chandelure. Chandelure gets to also go probably at the bottom of B tier. Ghost plus Fire is very strong offensively. The thing with Scarf is nice. The thing with Specs is nice. It can trick. It can do a lot of great utility things as well as be very, very strong offensively. So B tier is about perfect for it in my opinion. Okay, Heat More. Fire Lash is cool. That's it. Send Tweet. Um, you get to go down here. I think I'm going to move Typhlosion line below this because Typhlosion sucks. Um, then Volcarizzi. Is go not cast form, guys. Not Larvesta either. Um, Volcarona is actually going to go up here in S tier, I believe, as well. With heavy duty boots, unless you're playing the Heat Trend, this thing has an opportunity to win the game. Um, there, There is not a matchup where I don't think Volcarona can kind of put itself in a good position to win against a lot, a lot of teams. So we're going to go ahead and put Vulcan A tier with Quiver, plus its fat special attack and Spadef stat, as well as Roost. Um, and Bugwells plus Fire Move plus Grass Move plus Psychic Move hits just so many teams very hard. So. Volk can definitely put in a little bit of work if it's positioned correctly. <sighs> okay, on to Gen 6, where we have Delphox first. I'm going to go ahead and put Delphox in the tier of five starters, apparently. Um, there hasn't been much higher, unfortunately. Uh, there is one that's going to be pretty high, um, which is cool. But Delphox has good defensive utility with like Wish and Mystical Fire and Will-O-Wisp and things like that. It can call mind. I believe it can even Nasty Plot up. I, I'm not 100% for sure. But it has great coverage. It's pretty darn fast as well. It doesn't look like it should be as fast as it is. It has a meaty spadef and special attack stat as well. So it can do decently. It does not get nasty plot. I'm tripping. Um, but yeah, Gleam and Grass Knot and things like that as well. So very solid Pokemon. Decent recovery option. A good Witch Pastor for a low point value. Next up, we have Talonflame. I'd be remiss if I did not put Talonflame up here in B tier. Probably ahead of, um, what do you call it? Entei. It's much beyond its glory years of or ass and things like that but it's still very solid gilling is a great ability with boots you can pretty much guarantee your priority strong brave bird or dueling be off or even hurricane if you want to go special you can sword dance it can bulb look up it can u-turn it can taunt it can will-o-wisp it can defog it does a ton of things it's very fast it's very awesome i love that mon great mon high roar it's kind of got like low tier fire type syndrome where it's just not very strong, not very fast, not very bulky, so it doesn't offer much. So it's going to go down here in D tier. I've seen people use it before because of the secondary normal typing, but it doesn't mean it's good. You know what I mean? And then Vol Canyon, Volcarizzi Part 2. This thing gets to go in C tier. I'm not super big on it in the sense that if it's your water, you're kind of in a bad spot at J Bear. Um, but if not, it's very solid offensively. It has some good defensive pivoting options. Um, it can be solid with Navy or solid with Boots. Um, good with Specs and Scarf. I really like Toxic Protect a lot as well, so Pokemon's very solid. Next up, we are on to Gen 7, where it looks like we only have a few. We have um, Incineroar, which I think is going to be a low B tier Pokemon. Great pivot with U-Turn and Parting Shot, um, as well as Intimidate. It can be a great Fizz Def or Spadef Sponge. It can Swords Dance or Bulk Up. It can Flame Charge Up, and it's just generally strong. Um, in a very solid Pokemon, to be completely honest. So we're going to go ahead and put it here at the end of B tier. Ori Korea, I'm not going to really touch on. We've touched on it in the flying video. So Ori Korea, you know? Um, I'll put it in D tier. Whatever. Probably like... Oh, this is the wrong Pokemon. Ori Korea. Ori Korea. There it goes. Um, probably right here. Okay. Next up, Salazzle is a Pokemon I do think is very, very solid. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing at the bottom. Like, top of C tier, around there. Some Toxic variants are great. Poison plus Fire is a phenomenal stab combination and incredibly tough to switch into. The fact that you can poison everything makes Sub Toxic sets infuriating. And then if you expect a Sub Toxic set and try to play around accordingly, you you get Nasty Plasma. <laughs> it's not looking good for you. So, sorry, I'm a little tired. I woke up earlier this morning. Very solid Pokemon. Turtonator actually has some solid defensive uh, utility. I'm going to go ahead and put it in C tier for its value. Um, very defensively bulky. Gets a good spin support. It's not very good with Shell Smash though, so please do not Shell Smash with it. My, my one request. 
Well, Cephalon, I actually just recently drafted this for the first time, and I'm very excited to use it. I'm going to go ahead and put it in A tier for now. It's incredibly strong. Ghost boost fire again, but with better speed tier and beast boost. His ability to boost special attack every time it gets a kill is pretty damn free. It can be mixed and like boom and things like that as well. So you can do a lot of fun things. It's very, very solid on the special attack side, though, and it breaks through a lot of teams. Okay, Gen 8. We're almost done. Sin race. I'm putting in an S tier. I know. I know. This is crazy. But this is my Gen 8 kill leader, by the way. Hold on, let me see if I can pull this up. We spreadsheet. This is my Gen 8 kill leader. Just my kill leader all the time. It's not loading for me. When it loads up, we'll try and click back into it. But with U-turn, and then it's crazy high base power moves, even if this is not Libero, which is what we're kind of counting as, I think for its value, this is an S tier book. I think it's absolutely phenomenal. Okay, Colossal. Not my favorite Pokemon in the world, I won't lie. Um, but I do think it offers some kind of utility, so it's gonna get to go to the top D tier with Rapidash, Camerupt, and, you know, itself, and Colossal. Um, with Spikes, Rocked, and Spin, it offers a lot in that regard. Flame Body as well, as well as, I believe, Flash Fire. <sighs> Alright, yeah, anyways, look. 68 and 41. Look at that, that's a, that's a good one. Oh, you can't see it right there. You can see it over here, though. Oh, 65 and 41, I can't count. But yeah, back to Colossal. It's a pretty easy Pokemon. All right, only one more, right? And that's Big Center Scorch, who I'm actually going to put up here in high C tier. Yeah, I think I'm going to. Now I know this is a little bit much for something like a Center Scorch, but this thing is so good defensively with boots. Um, it spreads burns. It fire lashes, leech slice, and power with everything down. It's the only coverage you need. It rest talks up, it coils, it will o wisp it does so many really, really great team things for a team for an incredibly cheap price point. It's a great fairy resist. I draft a lot of very, very weak uh, teams. I like offensive steals. So, sometimes I draft really fairy weak teams, and Sun Scorch always ends up saving my ass. It wasn't this most recent SVT run that we uploaded, but the one before we had Sun Scorch, and it popped every game it came. And I absolutely fell in love with drafting it. So, I think for its value, it's a very good Pokemon. Um, but yeah, I think that's basically it. If you guys enjoyed, be sure to drop a like on the video as well as sub to the channel. Again, we're on our way to 2k and I appreciate you helping along reaching that goal. And uh, yeah, with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.